Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the Doctor of Digital, and what I'm going to do today is a summary of the 12 stages of the hero's journey. So uh, those who have been following along know that I've been doing stage by stage. I'm going to do a summary. So if some have asked about this, and if you want to know more information, of course, get in touch with me. There's a couple of things. I have some bonuses and some other things. But really, if you want to write and you want to write well, you can get a hold of the workshop and a worksheet that actually covers the 12 stages for your own writing. So that's something you want to get a hold of for this particular episode. This is a summary of the 12 stages of the hero's journey. The first stage, the ordinary world, stage one, happens to be one of the most essential elements of any story, even ones that don't follow the 12 stage structure to a T. Showing your protagonist within their ordinary world at the beginning of your story offers you the ability to showcase how much the core conflict they face rocks their world and allows you to foreshadow and create the necessary elements of empathy and catharsis that your story needs. Giving your story's protagonist a call to adventure, stage two, introduces the core concept of your story, dictates the genre your story is being told in, and helps to begin the process of character development that every great story needs. When your character refuses the call to adventure, Stage three, it allows you to create instant tension and conflict within the opening pages and first act of your story. It also gives you the chance to amp up the risks and stakes involved, which in turn engages the reader or audience even more. And it also managed to help you develop a protagonist with more depth that can help create empathy for them. Along the way, your protagonist and screenplay may need a mentor. Meeting the mentor, stage four, offers the protagonist someone that can guide them through their journey with wisdom, support, and even physical items. Beyond that, they help you to offer empathetic relationships within your story, as well as ways to introduce themes, story elements, and exposition to the reader and audience. At some point at the end of the first act, your story may showcase a moment where your protagonist needs to cross the threshold, stage five, between their ordinary world and the special world they will be experiencing as their inner or outer journey begins. Such a moment shifts everything from the first act to the second, allowing the reader and audience to feel that shift so they can prepare for the journey to come. It showcases the difference between the protagonist's ordinary world and the special world to come. And, even more important, we're introduced to the first shift in the character arc of the protagonist as they decide to venture out into the unknown. And it's within this unknown that the protagonist faces many tests and meets their allies and enemies, stage six, all of which define the meat of your story by introducing the conflict, expanding the cast of characters, and offering a more engaging and compelling narrative. Once you've put your protagonist through those tests and once they've met their allies and enemies, they're going to need to approach the inmost cave, Stage seven of the story, preparing to face their greatest fears and conflicts. This is an essential element of your narrative, allowing the reader, audience, and characters to catch their breath, reflect, review, and plan ahead for the conflict just over the horizon. And it allows you, the writer, to build the necessary tension and anticipation that you need going into the midpoint of your story. Everything within the first act and beginning of the second builds up to the ordeal, stage eight, which is the first real conflict that the protagonist must face. The ordeal is the midpoint of your story that works as a false climax, taking your protagonist to the depths of despair. It offers you the ability to create an engaging midpoint climax that takes you into the third act. It ups the stakes within your story by taking away beloved allies and mentors, and it sets up the necessary transformation that your protagonist must go through in order to prevail. And after your hero has gone through all of that, 
you may want or need to reward them with something that they can use to take on the final threat they face during the climax of your story. The reward, Stage 9, offers the protagonist the added boost they need to propel themselves through the conflict they face during the climax of the story where they are facing their toughest challenge, be it physical or emotional. A special weapon, an elixir, some knowledge, an experience, or reconciliation are the five types of rewards that heroes need to prevail. Once they've attained the reward, it's time for the hero to get on the road back, stage 10, to their ordinary world. The road back allows the hero and the reader and audience to see the light at the end of the tunnel. If not for a few brief moments, it then introduces more conflict, higher stakes, and reveals everything that is at risk going into the climax of the protagonist's journey. And the climax of your hero's journey encompasses the resurrection, stage 11. It's not just about defeating the villain, winning the big game, getting the girl or guy, or accomplishing a goal. Your hero needs to be transformed by the end of the story. They need to be resurrected as a better version of themselves after having endured this long journey full of tests, obstacles, and hurdles. And their final test in this climax needs to be the ultimate challenge with the highest of stakes. That's how you end your script with a bang, both physically and emotionally, as far as whatever the story and genre may be. Not every story calls for the protagonist to return to their ordinary world, stage 12, but it's a wonderful tool to consider using within your cinematic tales. It helps to bring your story full circle and complete your protagonist character arc. Use them all in sequence, use them in different order, or pick certain stages and apply them to your own structures. And always remember, quote, the hero's journey is a skeleton framework that should be fleshed out with the details of and surprises of the individual story. The structure should not call attention to itself, nor should it be followed too precisely. The order of the stages is only one of many possible variations. The stages can be deleted, added to, and drastically shuffled without losing any of their power. Close quote. Christopher Vogler, The Hero's Journey with the Writer's Journey, Mythic Structure for Writers. Well, that's it as a summary of the 12 stages of The Hero's Journey. Now, if you have not contacted me for The Hero's Journey Activity Worksheet, you need to do that right away. I can help you see how to write with The Hero's Journey in mind. If you have a story, a short story, fiction, something like a narrative, a memoir, a screenplay, anything that is creative, this can help. So if you've been benefiting from this, get in touch with me because this can really help strengthen your writing and you can get some feedback and some help to improve whatever basic story you have, but to take it to the next level. Until next time, this is the Doctor of Digital, and we'll see you in, at that point, Deus Volt.